thank you for joining us today on Living It Up, Making Life Juicy. I'm Ingrid Guthrie, and I have two special guests here today. I have um, Steve Vernick, who Hi. is the founder of the Safe Haven for the Bullied and Bullies, which is on Facebook. And on the end here, we have uh, Reverend Rick Fire, who is an interfaith minister and licensed clinical social worker. Um, what are we going to be discussing today? Bullying. Bullying in the epidemic and what it's causing in the world and, uh, and what can be done about it. Great. Um, mm -hmm. I know you were saying earlier that you have some, um, Steve, you have some uh, experience with having yeah. been bullied. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, Reverend Fire, why don't you tell us what, uh, how, you, how you work? Sure. Uh, I work in two aspects. As you mentioned, I'm a licensed clinical social worker. So I work with individuals couples, families, also communities and in school districts for individuals that have been victims of bullying and also individuals who find themselves being bullied themselves. I also work as a interfaith minister, as Ingrid mentioned, so I work with people not only on the emotional, psychological, physical aspects of being bullied or being a bully, but also in the spiritual aspects as well. Interesting, very interesting. And um, Steve, when did you um, start your safe haven on Facebook? Um, I started it probably about maybe four or five months ago. You know, right around the peak of you know seeing on the news uh, over and over again. Man. Yeah, kids just being bullied and kids committing suicide and just it just peaked up in the news and. And being a person who's been bullied in my past, you know, it, it kind of like hit me in my heart. And, I, and mm -hmm. I said, you know, well, what's out there? You know, I've seen a couple spots, but I just wanted to make another place where people could find some peace of mind where they could say what they want. And I, and I looked at it and I said, you know, a lot of people are coming down on the bulliers. Mm -hmm. But the bulliers tend to be in a lot of pain, too, and that's why they do it. And I want to be able to bring that together and say, hey, listen, bullied and the bullies can come together to try to work out the differences because we're all beautiful people, and no one needs to suffer the way they're suffering, not the bullied and not the bullies. That's right. Very good. Um, now, uh, what, uh, let's define some types of bullying. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, well, I would say, as a common definition, Bullying is when someone is targeted for some aspect of themselves, their behavior, their perceived or actual identity, and it involves either cruel, mean words, mm -hmm. actions, or, at, or uh, behaviors. So there's physical bullying, when somebody is actually physically attacked or harmed, also under physical bullying would be a person's property being stolen Damage. or right. destroyed. Right. There is um, verbal bullying, mm -hmm. the verbal insults, etc. Cyber bullying, which includes Ooh. the internet, but also includes now text messages, yeah. pictures um, on the phone, videos, etc. Invasion of people's privacy in that way. Mm -hmm and emotional mm -hmm. bullying, all of the different aspects of bullying affect somebody emotionally, but from a social emotional context, uh, one of the major types of bullying is spreading rumors, false rumors, mm -hmm. or things that actually happen to someone but is nobody else's business to other folks, and also something that's particularly painful for young people, uh, school age people, is being excluded from a social group mm -hmm. based on uh, being bullied or targeted. And mm -hmm. that's extremely painful and another type of, of social or emotional bullying. I mean, there's, there's some things I'd like to add about Please. that. I mean, bullying doesn't even have to be that drastic. I think that bullying can also just be one person or a group of people imposing on somebody else to try to make feel someone else feel less of a person and to have that person excluded. And you bring up a great point about the social networking. Like with Facebook, right. that's killing people. That's, you know, when I was young and, and I got bullied and friends got bullied, you know, we at least had the ability to go home and be with our family 
and find refuge there right. away Leave from it out school. The door, outside the door. But now everybody's right. on Facebook. They have a profile page, and kids are blogging up their thing with, mm -hmm. "Oh, you're this, you're that, and you're, you know, whatever." And people go onto the Facebook page and see that what's projected to the world about this person, somebody's, you know, filling up with all these negative comments. It destroys a person in so many ways, and, and I think that that is a very yeah very big factor yeah. in what escalated this. Right. Now, there's a certain group that you particularly um, counsel? Yeah, uh, one of my areas of specialization is I work in sex and gender, working with young people, older people, middle-aged mm -hmm. people, on issues related to their sexual identity or their gender identity. And statistically, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender people and youth are targeted in incidents of bullying, um, even more so than other folks. Um, while other people are tar targeted because of their religion, because of ethnic or racial background, because of ability or differing, mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, difference in ability, the gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender youth are targeted five times more than other youth in the arena of bullying. And you have some statistics. Yeah, I, I, I do. In in preparation astounding. for the absolutely, in, in preparation for the show, I I looked up some of the numbers, which I have familiarity with. But um, with all of the incidents that Steve mentioned with the youth suicides mm -hmm. and uh, the link with, I think the number is up to at least a dozen of them in in the past six months related directly to those youth being either gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, mm -hmm. or perceived as such. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to get the, the most up-to-date statistics. And nearly a quarter of all high school students have been targeted, harassed, or bullied. And this is not just gay or lesbian mm -hmm. students. This is all students. Uh, you know, one thing is, is that a lot of students even straight students yes. get called gay, get yeah. called this and that, mm -hmm. which, you know, and, and really, in my opinion, being called gay or whatever is not an insult, but it's the, it's the way it's taken mm -hmm. and the way it's being said that is right. making straight people even like crazy about it. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Uh, back to the statistics, six out of 10 American teens report that they witness other students being bullied on a daily basis. One study showed that gay slurs are heard 25 times a day uh, in, in schools. That's insane. It, yeah, <laughs> That's it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I, I, it boggles the mind. Yeah. But the comment, the, oh, you're so gay. Yeah. And even students who think, oh, I don't, I'm not prejudiced against homosexuals. In fact, I have a friend who is one. Do not understand the power of words. They may not be meaning, oh, I'm against this person because they're a homosexual. I'm just using that yeah, as just, slang. As, as that if term. it is just supposed the, to be bad, but Just the gay not. as an insult. Right. You know, and you know, when I was young, I used to call my brother gay, and, I, and we used to call each other gay, and our, my, me and my friends used to call each other gay, and it was because we were young, and we didn't, you know, we never really correlated it to that, but absolutely, yeah. you know, looking at back at my right. past, you know, I mean, as much as I can say I was bullied, mm -hmm. I did bully a little bit, and that's why I'm here, because I can handle both sides. Yeah, you know? yeah, and, and back to Steve's point, uh, tying it into the statistics, those that are bullied often then become a bully mm -hmm. if they're able to gain that piece of power because it's a power dynamic. Mm -hmm. The bully right. targets someone that they perceive as less powerful to give themselves power mm -hmm. because something has happened to that bully to make them feel that they need to be in a position mm -hmm. of power. Mm -hmm. Someone, whether it's their parents, through right. physical, emotional abuse, religious, religious, um, something about that bully has made them be in a predicament that they need to take the focus off of themselves mm -hmm. and target somebody else. Right. In fact, statistically, in the serious school shooting incidents, where many deaths have occurred that way as well, 75% of those incidents, the shooters, the, the students who killed other students, were harassed or bullied. So like Col Columbine and all these other school things, 
could have been prevented if if somebody would have stepped in and let these people know that they were loved and if people weren't bullying them. All these deaths where the where the shooter is the one that is victimized and said, oh, it's their fault, they're the problem. It's because they get to a point where they're like, you know what, I'm getting attacked from every direction. I'm going to either kill myself yeah. or other people. Right. And it's hard, sometimes it's easier for someone to kill other people than right. themselves. Attack and back. that's what right. happens. Yeah. Or, or do right. both. Yeah. Kill right. someone and else then, and then themselves. Oh. Yeah. Right. Um, did you have more statistics? Yeah, I, I do. Uh, in addition to some of these other horrific things, talking about how this affects people's futures, if they stay alive, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one in ten students drop out of school because of repeat bullying. Um, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender youth are five times more likely to miss school because of feeling unsafe mm -hmm. or being targeted. Uh, Sixty-five percent of all uh, GLBT youth feel unsafe in their schools, and twenty-eight percent of them drop out of school because because of having having to deal with this. Uh, also, eighty-five percent of teachers in our country are opposed to incorporating gay, lesbian, bisexual themes in their teaching, so they don't get just get the message from their peers. They get the message from their teachers. And students report that with all of these gay slurs that are being thrown around in the classroom, in the lunchroom, in the hallways, 97% of the time, teachers do not respond mm -hmm. and, yeah. uh, and do not That's take action. That's just disgusting. That's right. disgusting. Um, I would like to say one mm -hmm. thing about that. I have a... I had a personal instance where I was being bullied by, by an individual and he came up to my desk and he got in my face and, and this and that and he started pushing me around. And this happened at school. This happened in high school and I ended up, and the teacher didn't do anything and so as I was walking up to my locker and I got to my locker, the individual came up and pushed me into my locker and I turned around and we got into a scuffle and I, and I had to fight to defend myself and then the, when the teacher finally came, the bully, because I mean, I'm, I tend to be a nicer person and I don't lie, I don't do this, start mm -hmm. saying, oh, he started it, he did this and made up all this stuff. And oh, next thing I know, yes. I'm being drugged to the principal's office. I end up with a suspension. So when the teacher steps in, it ends up sometimes being the yeah. innocent person or the victim right. that ends up getting punished. And that tells me, don't stand up for yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because well, otherwise, you're right. safe here, too. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, pardon me while I cheat on my notes here. Sure. You were mentioning the um, GLSCN. Yeah, GLSEN. GLSEN. GLSEN is the Gay, Lesbian, Straight Education Network. They're an awesome organization. Many middle schools and high schools that have gay straight alliances mm -hmm. are sponsored or get resources from GLSEN. And um, one of the things that, that we were discussing is the other side of this. Okay, now we're talking about these teachers do not take action. They, and this is not to say that we think no teachers ever right. take action, no administrators, right. no counselors. We're not but, saying that. <laughs> but obviously there is a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, after the epidemic of the suicides that mm -hmm. all of us know about, and it's part of the reason that we're here today, right. uh, the Secretary of Education, 